We got a giant thunderstorm last night, probably one of the biggest since I've lived out here. Uh, and it was just a ton of lightning and thunder, a ton of rain. And I noticed this morning when I walked out the back door that there was a considerable, you, know, you could tell basically a river had flowed behind my house, which actually there is water damage in the house. And then I came out to the shop. I've always worried about this shop when we built it, if we got a big heavy rain, uh, man. And it flooded, man. It, there's water everywhere. I mean, I was just looking at that electrical box sitting in water. It, so there's a lot of water back here. This table I've been working on, sitting in puddles of water. And that nice chair, finished project over there, expensive plywood, a tabletop. And it, it, if you could be in here right now, it just feels steamy and hot, and it, it's just nasty. It stinks. It's a total mess. My books, these are really nice books. Messed up, shouldn't really be on the floor, but whatever. This tool chest I just got that is a World War II tool chest, issued tool chest. Everything here is soaking wet. All my jigs, that really nice ax. The table obviously is sitting in water. I think we could probably salvage that. That'll dry out and we can sand it. Well, this is a huge bummer. I'm going to try to stay positive. Uh, I do think everything here is probably salvageable. I hope it just, it all has to be dried out and it's going to take a long time. I really don't even know where to start. I need to get stuff out of water. I guess that's a good start. <clears throat> Let me set you guys down somewhere. So I've got the big fan running. This is really the only fan I've got, unfortunately. I need more fans. There's a really wet spot over there and then all in here. That's drying out fairly quick. Uh, I vacuumed some of it up with the vacuum. So I'm just gonna have to do it in stages. Dry, dry it, and then hit this back here. And then start working on stickering, stacking lumber and drying out any machinery that could get rusted, so. Just uh, just sit and wait until this fan does its job. Okay, so we're making progress. I've got a lot of fans running. One, two, three, four, and then I've got my leaf blower trying to blow out under machines. Getting this dried out, as you can tell, it's starting to happen. Uh, and then I've got to get everything that's wet on the floor dried out. Uh, and then once I dry it all out on the floor, I will need to get the dehumidifier cranked up and get the humidity down. So I'm working on getting this plywood picked up. That bottom sheet is pretty wet. It was sitting on the floor, obviously it got wet. So I need to get to it and try to get a fan on it and dry it out. It's actually marine grade plywood, so it's designed to get wet, but it doesn't, I don't want it to be soaking in water. Uh, so I'm gonna get it picked up and get a fan on it. Let me show you the drainage situation out here. So the flow of water, you can see how it came all the way down, you know, all this is washed up. It actually, it was a river kind of, you can see all the debris there, it was flowing down around my kid's play set all the way to my gate. And I actually found 
boards from the shop that just scrap boards that were outside that had washed all the way down to the gate you can see how wet this is it all channels into here i'm pretty sure that this had filled up above slab level you know this was probably pretty full of water it, it's going two different ways you can see you can see the grass line right there and then you can see all the debris line here coming down hits right into that back door like it basically runs directly into the back of the shop probably ooh, it's going to probably diverts a little bit this way but there's the ground goes higher here so you don't uh the water doesn't have anywhere to go so it probably sits here finds its way into the shop into the door and then what it doesn't go in the shop is coming around this side and flowing down kind of a natural channel here where water flows i need to find a way to turn it and maybe divert it out to there i don't even know if that's possible um maybe i could get a concrete wall in here or something I don't know we'll figure that out I'll probably have to get someone out here to talk to me about that I need to find a bobcat so before I go real quick I want to uh, show you guys this super cool tool chest I ran into this guy I found a, his, an ad on Facebook for tools for sale and I saw a few photos and it looked really cool and I went out there and it was this really really interesting 81 year old 8th generation cabinet maker who was selling everything he owned that's how I got I don't even think I've shown you guys the Yates 14 inch disc sander. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen it. Um, but he had this. I bought this from him. Um, and I used this to make the putter, which was the last video I posted. This thing is smooth and works really, really nice. It's a cool machine. It goes forever, man. That thing takes like five minutes to stop turning. Uh, I also scored this. So this cool tool chest I was telling you about. This is a World War II. It still has the contents list so i guess that you would this was for a car engineer or a carpenter um and this was what he was supposed to have in it Let's see if i can get a little more light here so you've got chalk bar wrecking gooseneck oh man blades hacksaw drill clamps brace bit ratchet i don't know what a sweet 10 inch is um all these drill bits different diameters, different lengths, hacksaw, uh, marking gauge, scratch, hammer, hammer, machinist, ball peen, carpenter's hammer, a hatchet, um, knife, man these are so cool, level and plumb, uh, countersink, dividers, that's pretty cool, that's furniture stuff, um, a file, more files, taper slim, that's for sharpening your uh, hand saws, um, chisels you've got a quarter inch half inch and one inch chisels for socket framing I'm sure they were working on bridges and stuff like that I'll make it bunkers doing all kinds of cool stuff well I guess it wasn't cool if you were in the war at all but interesting to me tape measure wrench it's sweet man like it's cool that it has the original list there this upper tray he added to it and I actually picked up this Cool Stanley Sweetheart adjustable block plane. These three dividers. Um, I don't know the names on these. But, you know, this one's pretty looking. I love the way this one looks. And this is RTC RT Company. This cool old spoke shave, which I've actually used and honestly it does not work that well, but that's okay. I can tune that up. Saw till here, you can put your hand saws in there. Pretty cool. I think it's cool to have something like this army issued plus it's good storage this guy had so many tools it was unbelievable i mean i i, I had to be very careful because i wanted to buy like everything he had i got a cool sweden gouge there another one here i bought a bunch of these off of them 25 millimeter number 10 this is germany that's a cool marking with a screw on it don't know if anybody knows anything about that this little chisel, drop forward, Switzerland, uh, did I read that wrong? No, it's German, Germany. He's from, he was, a, he's actually from Germany, so that's probably why a lot of his tools are German tools. This is Sweden, again, I can't read any of that because I don't know the language. Pretty cool though. I love tools like that. You know, every time I pick one of these tools up or use that toolbox, I'll think of that old man. I spent some time talking to him. He was a very interesting, very kind fella. So 
Um, look, that thing's still turning. I don't know how long I've been talking to you guys, but yeah, I, I love finding old tools like that. So I wanted to show you those. One more thing. Got one more. This cool axe, which you know what we should do real quick is we should go chunk this at the target. I've never thrown a full size axe. This is a True Temper Kelly Perfect. These are really good axes. And he put a nice handle on it, hickory handle. Okay, so let's give this a shot. I'm gonna chunk it at the target. Do not laugh at me. I've actually never thrown a full size axe before. So I have no idea. This thing's pretty freaking heavy. I have no idea what the form is for this. Uh, but I'm just gonna give it a, give it a whirl. I think I need to go buy one from Home Depot to do this. I think the 80 year old German dude would be not happy with me right now. Chunking his tools at a target in the mud and dirt. This would be really frightening. If someone breaks into my house, I'm coming at you with an ax and you're gonna be freaked out. Just be careful, because you do not want an ax being thrown at you. I would prefer a gunshot at me or someone chunking an ax at me. 